following is a presentation of HBO Sports. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. On November 14, HBO Pay-Per-View will take you live to Las Vegas to watch as Puerto Rican welterweight star Miguel Cotto becomes the latest to risk his career and his reputation against the number one pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the sport, Filipino whirlwind Manny Pacquiao. In his last two fights, Pacquiao embarrassed the supposedly too much larger Oscar De La Hoya and Ricky Hatton, both with violent knockouts. Meanwhile, Cotto was earning the right to fight Pac-Man not by looking dominant, but rather by remaining indomitable amid difficult circumstances. Let's go back now to Cotto's last ring appearance, June 13 in Madison Square Garden, against the sturdy and underappreciated Joshua Clotty of Ghana. It was Cotto's first fight without his uncle and longtime trainer, Evangelista Cotto, with whom his often simmering relationship had finally boiled over. Here's how I called it with Emmanuel Stewart and Max Kellerman. Good evening, Josh. Miguel, you received the rules early in the night. Let's go toe to toe, touch gloves, and good luck to the both of you. Miguel Cotto is favored. Many in boxing like the upset. The referee is Arthur Mercanti Jr. His legendary father, Arthur Sr., watching at home tonight. Arthur, we miss you, and we love you. First round gets underway. Both men set up to box for the moment. Clotty has been known to dispense with the jab early in some of his fights in favor of simply going to the body. Tonight, he begins to operate behind the jab conventionally here in round one. Cotto is extremely patient at the beginning of fights. Yeah. But I think that's just going to be for a very short period of time tonight. There's too much emotions and too much energy in this building for this fight to be patient. If you've followed Cotto over the years, you know that his two primary weapons are the brilliant left hook to the body and the straight right hand upstairs. But both guys are exhibiting beautiful jabs tonight, which is very, very unusual. I thought it, that it would be more of a tight hook tight battle but I'm seeing some wonderful jabs right between the gloves of the opponents well from both of them Clotty may be using the jab more than previously because he thinks he has a length and reach advantage against Cotto Cotto's flashed the jab against Mosley he used timing to offset Mosley's speed and also against Margarito especially over the first half of the fight timing exactly Max I think that Cotto reminds me of Marco Antonio Barrera at his peak in the sense that the jab never seems to come at exactly the moment when you expect it. Clotty trying to penetrate Cotto's tight guard. Cotto has been very selective in his punching here in the first round. One thing to watch with Clotty, does his punch count drop off? So far, the only really clear decisive punch that I've saw has been Clotty's jab has been the most, to me, a significant, significant punch so far in this fight. Clotty blocking Cotto's body shots with his elbows. Great body punchers know how to block body punches. Cotto blocking Clotty's body shots with his arms. When we go to the corners, you'll be listening to interpreters. In Cotto's corner, Terry Olaya interpreting a new trainer, Joe Santiago. And in Clotty's corner, a foreign RA and down goes Clotty at the end of round one. And Cotto has a vital point. It looked like it was kind of a short left hook type yep. jab. Upstairs left hook. And the only clean punch he landed in the round. I think it was a left jab. I it think it just hook. caught him as though it was... He's a left-handed fighter, Cotto. Well, thank God for replays. You won the first round. You won the first round. 
Let's brush it off. Brush this off. You want the you want the round. Brush this off, okay? Let your hands go. Let your hands go. Let your hands go. Let your hands go. That's what you got to go. Let your hands go. It's nothing. That was nothing. Forget about it. Forget about it. Here we see Cotto land, which was just a solid, powerful left jab, as I said, but he just caught it at the right time when his body was in a bad position and it forced a knockdown. Great call, Max. A knockdown on a jab. And again, the timing. It came at a moment when Flatty didn't expect it. Guys, it was a knockdown of a granite-chinned opponent Bingo. with a jab. I think the body position at the time, too, we have to cause the knockdown. But nevertheless, that was the only clean punch that I saw for the most part. In his big fights, and Max makes the point, in his big fights, Flatty hasn't even been buzzed, much less knocked down. So that's a tremendously important fight or a point for Cotto on the scorecards. You heard Plotty's trainer, Kwame Asante, telling him he had won the round. Well, not exactly. When, when Claudio punches, you'll notice he kind of jumps up as he, when he just said he punches, very similar to the way that I Quarte used to punch. They, all those guys from Goddard, they keep their hands up high, but when they start punches, they kind of raise their bodies up often when they punch. Both fighters still operating behind very tight defenses. One minute into round two. Cotto stepping up the action just a little bit. Plotty reaching with the left hand to go to the body. Now, Plotty's going to dip that low to land his left hook to the body. There's going to be an opportunity for some right hand counter punches by Cotto. Well, I tell you what, at this point, you know. Cloudy still seems to be the better fight at this point, but I'm, as I'm watching. I mean, take that knockdown away for the most part. It's still that Cloudy has a better defense for the body punches, too. But Emmanuel, one thing to watch. In his big fights, Cloudy has dipped as low as averaging only 40 punches thrown per round. But he's landing clean, accurate punches when he does punch. I'm watching his punches are much more pinpoint. The biggest problem he has is when he punches, he off the ship, as I said earlier, pulls his head up. You see that better than most judges. Many judges respond mostly to punch count. Yeah, but it's, but Claudia is still to me. He's a much more precision and accurate puncher well, in this fight. Claudia is certainly landing the, the more obvious, accurate punches, head snapping punches here early. See, that's his biggest danger right there. As he comes in off the time, he pulls his head up, and his body is up in the air where he can easily get knocked down. But as we've seen, Cotto is the heavy hand, heavier handed puncher. Definitely. There's no doubt about that. He's proven that. And he's also proven that he can come through adversity. And he has so many fights. He's been hurt, cut, knocked down, out on the street, and came back to win. Down against Ricardo Torres. Hurt and cut against Zab Kuda. Wobbled by Demarcus Corley, back at 140 pounds. Cotto has indeed, or excuse me, Cotto has indeed stared down a fair amount of adversity. It's very important. Use it. All right, he's opening up with that. If you stir it up, keep moving. Light side to side. Side to side, side to side. Come on, Jordan. We're doing it very well. A little bit of water now. Copy box numbers in round two, pretty close. Toto, nine out of 62, a low connect percentage of 15%. That has to do with what Emmanuel said to you about Flotty doing so well at blocking the body punches. Flotty was 13 out of 54. A connect percentage of 24%. Cotto still leading on Emmanuel's or on uh, Harold Letterman's scorecard, despite having 
Lost the second round there because of the knockdown in round one. Cloudy gets Dakota's ear with that left hook. But the left jab of Cloudy has been very effective going between Cotto's glove. Cotto fights with that pick and boost type style with his head moving forward, bent forward, and oftentimes Cloudy's going right through the center with his jab. And the body punch that Cloudy shoots is more effective. He shoots the hook on top to make Cotto take his right hand up, and then he shoots the left hook to the body. And it's been working so far. He hasn't did it that often, but when he does do it, it's been effective. Biggest chance at catching Cloudy is when Cloudy is coming forward and punching. The same way that Oscar De La Hoya knocked down my court because, as I said, when he throws his punches, he pulls his head up. And that's when Cotto has got to try to catch him when he's coming forward and punching. Meanwhile, as Cotto's leaning forward, Cloudy is yeah, starting to find the range of the left yep, uppercut. Yep, he's working that left hand beautifully, he's working outside and up through the middle of that hole that everybody in boxing knows that Cotto has. Cotto has. He's easy to hit him with punches up between the belts. One of the answers we already have in the wake of the Margarito loss for Cotto is that when presented with an aggressive opponent here in Cloddy, Cotto is not simply giving up ground and running away. He's fighting back and at times backing up Cloddy, although here we see him fight at the perimeter of the ring. But Cloddy's defense has been fantastic tonight. His outside of the knockdown, he's won to me every part of the fight for the most part for accurate punches. Except for that knockdown. So what adjustment could Cotto make to penetrate that guard? It's going to be very difficult. I see a rough, rough night for Miguel. Yeah, I think that what he needs to do is to start, which he was doing himself. He had a pretty good jab, which he's totally abandoned earlier. Break, break. Cotto may have been thumbed in the eye. Oh, no, it's cut from the accident. But. And there's the blood as Miguel Cotto has been cut ah. over the left eye. He's no stranger to blood. He has a new cut man tonight. Former cut man Miguel Diaz was shifted aside in favor of Joe Chavez, who has never worked with Cotto before. So new trainer and new cut man in the Cotto corner. The referee, Arthur McCanty, is a... That's not a good cut. Avoid going to the ropes, Joe. Avoid the ropes. Come on, work the other leg now, Joe. Yeah. Got you. Right here, you can see where the butt occurred. As you see, they're coming together. They had a collision right there. And, and evidently, out of the situation, Cotto got the worst of it. And the referee properly informed all of the judges that it was an accidental fight. Good call by Arthur McCanty Jr. Emmanuel, you're as good at knowing this as anybody. What chance does Joe Chavez have with that cut? I think he has a good chance, but I, I, I don't know what he's using over there. Time in. I don't like the way it's looking. An eventful first three rounds. Total with a knockdown in round one. Gladdy has landed more punches and seems to have landed more effective blows. Now Cotto cut on a headbutt at the end of round three. Our Harold Letterman won the Sam Taub Award for broadcasting from the Boxing Writers of America last night. The highest honor available to a boxing broadcaster. Congratulations, Harold. How do you have it scored? Okay, Jim, thank you very kindly. Two rounds to one. 29-27, Miguel Cotto. Jim, if the fight gets stopped due to that accidental headbutt, before the fourth round ends, it's a no contest, it's a no decision. If we go beyond the fourth round, they go to the score cards if the fight gets stopped because of that cut. Anyway, I thought Cotto won the first round and he gets an extra point for the knockdown. He won the third round because he had jammed him, but Joshua Cloudy won the second. Two to one, Cotto. Blood beginning to stream from Cotto's left eye again. Joe Chavez momentarily had it stopped, but now Cloudy has gotten it going again by landing a right hand up there. 
More activity in the fight. Cotto seems to feel a sense of urgency, and Claudio will respond in kind. And Cotto feeling the urgency targets the body of Joshua Claudio. And Claudio comes back with a great left hook to the body and a terrific uppercut. Great combination by Claudio. I like the way that Miguel is trying to fight back and showing the urgency, but tonight, Claudio, this is Claudio's night as far as I can see at this point, with or without the cut. And the cut doesn't help at all. Good shot in the middle of that combination by Cotto. Cotto's best chance of hurting Claudio, I said, is to catch Claudio when he's there and it changes. But just going after him, being aggressive and being offensive, you're not going to catch hurting. He's going to have to make Claudio punch with him and try to catch it when his head is up. Cotto beginning to outdistance Claudio in punches thrown here in round number four. Yeah, but not landed. Hard right hand by Claudio. Cotto can't see the right hand coming. No, and he's, and he's, he's shooting the uppercuts between the gloves, too. the first time somebody's held in the fight. Well, for whatever reason, Claudio seems to show some kind of discomfort at that moment. Good combination by Cotto. And again, Max is right. He can't see the right hand coming, so he stepped away. Uppercut by Claudio. Good left hook by Cotto. Crowd is trying to lift the spirits of the Puerto Rican fighter. He follows Cotto all the way back to his corner to get a good look at the cut. That's it. It's okay, Miguel. Breathe deeply through your nose. Yeah, yes. That's it, it's straight, there's nothing there. Here we see right here, that not just the, the cut that came from the beginning, but the, but, but the accuracy of the punches and the variety of punches that Claude is doing is which is making it so difficult for Cotto to get out of the way. He's coming up between the gloves, outside, and Copy box numbers in round four. Cotto 21 out of 77. Stepping up the punch count to try to create pressure. Claudio 20 out of 55. More accurate, as Emmanuel has pointed out. 15 of Cotto's connects were in the last minute of the round, and to Harold Letterman's eyes, they were good enough to win the round for him. So despite the fact that Emmanuel is telling us over and over that it looks like Claudio's night, Cotto has a three-point lead on Harold Letterman's scorecard. And given that, Cotto may feel he's up on the cards and the severity of the cut, and the way the rules operate, where it's in Cotto's advantage, it's to his advantage to essentially quit. The fact that he's not is more testimony to the kind of fighter Cotto is. It's the reason he engenders the kind of passion he does in his fan base. You know, he has never, never taken and gotten into the fact of criticizing Margarita with, it, with loaded gloves with his hands. Potentially. Yeah. Never, he never has did that. He's been a stand-up, and stand-up could be about the Margarito thing, in fact. And Clotty painting Cotto with right hand here as the blood flows again from Cotto's left eye. In fact, Cotto himself acknowledged that no one from his camp went to Antonio Margarito's dressing room last July 25 to watch his hands being wrapped. And when given a chance to blame that on his estranged uncle, he wouldn't go there and said, nope, it was all our faults, mine included. He's a very special athlete. Our right hand again by Clark. Miguel Cotto in deep tonight. Blood streaming from above his left eye after an accidental headbutt in round three. No one wants to fight Joshua Claudi, let alone with a bad cut over his eye. 
Good tackle by Cotto. Vladi came at him, went up on Dakota's shoulder, and Miguel just put him down. And Vladi appears to be hurt. Suck it up. responded to this sort of thing. Let's see how Claudia responds. Be like a champ. Get up and walk it off. I don't know if you could call this a foul, Emmanuel. It's, no, it's more on the order of all's fair and war. Joshua Claudi would get five minutes to recover from this. I'll give you five minutes. You want five minutes? Hey, wash this out. I don't need you, Doc. I don't need you. No, no, no. Suck it up, kid. Let's keep it clean now. I know it's an accident. You slipped. Okay? That's a champion now. Ready? Time in. You just Keep watched a very good referee at work. What a pedigree he has. He has great experience too. And now Claudie comes back to fight again. Let's see how that knee affects him. Well, now both guys may have a handicap. One may have a sore knee and one has a bad cut. Break! Break! Step back. Watch the elbow now. Come on now. If Claudie cannot drive forward on that left foot, it could take some of the mustard off his right hand. That would be a tremendous break from Miguel Cotto. You know, the, the fact the way that Claudia fights, which doesn't require a lot of footwork anyway, well, I think it won't be as damaging as it would have been in a fighter that danced around a lot. Don't wait for him. Don't wait for him. You keep your right hand up. Keep your right hand up. When he comes in, when he comes in, when he comes in, he's drawing his back. He's trying to pull your hands down. Keep your hand right up. Make your right hand very tight. Keep it really, really, really tight. Keep it tight. Wow. Claude is saying his feet is hurting. His, his knee is hurting badly. His knee is hurting very badly. You want to, you want to continue? Yeah, we can see which caused the uh, throwdown, so to say. It is really hard to, you know, look like he purposely threw him down. But, you know, in the anger and aggression and knowing that he was behind on points, I could easily understand. You know, I don't think he, he threw him down, Emmanuel. He was just his aggression. I, I, think, I think he just tried to shove him off. Yeah, yeah, I think he just shed him. You know, he, he, he shed him from his body, and Flatty fell in an awkward way. I mean, I don't know if I'm giving Cotto too much of an apology there, but... Time, it didn't look time. to me like he had any intention of throwing him to the canvas. No, I agree with you. He wanted him off his shoulder. He was very anxious to, to try to get over the fight. Really, he's the man on points, and I think he was just trying to get rid of him so he could get back to trying to mount his attack that he had doing during the fight at time. Technically, it was a much better round for Claudi, who landed twice as many punches as Cotto by copy box count. And Cotto lowered his Watch punch count head. from 77 back down to 57. You heard between rounds as Claudie told his corner that he is in pain from the left knee injury. Low blow by Claudie. Uh, Claudie. First one of the fight. And Canty just watches and notes it. Left hook and a straight right hand by Cotto. He seems to be gaining a little confidence now. Yeah. Claudie is much less mobile than before. Cotto's trapping him against the ropes. Well, we saw what Cotto has did in these situations in the past. He's probably a master dealing with disasters. Crowd comes alive. Claudie's trapped in the corner. Good left hand inside by Claudie. Cotto is undeterred. Cotto's not going to let him out of the trap. 
Many of these punches are being blocked. But the aggression is catching the eyes of the crowd and the judges. Well, Cotto needs to just try to catch Cloudy trying to exchange with him right in that position with a left hook while he's exchanging. Look, straight right hand upstairs by Cotto. Got it through the guard. Cloudy's right hand is losing steam. Excellent uppercut by Cotto. Cloudy tries to come back with a big right hand. And you see Cotto put him right back in the ropes where he kept him right in the corner. This is brilliant tactics by Miguel Cotto. This is wing generalship as he has trapped Cloudy in the corner for nearly a full minute here. Now, finally, he gives him some space. And then drives him back again. Caught Cotto, or caught Cloudy on the chin. If Cloudy stays over there, he's going to be in trouble. But sooner or later, Miguel is too much of a power puncher. He's going to start penetrating even through that tight defense. Suddenly, the Miguel Cotto of old has emerged against an immobilized Joshua Cloudy. Both these guys have excuses to quit. And they're both fighting. Hard right hand by Cloudy. And boy, are they fighting. But Cloudy's legs are hurt. He has to go right back to the ropes again. What a chin Cotto has. Way, he's going to get tired, he's going to get tired, he's going to get, going to get tired, be fast, be fast, when you're, when you're hitting, cover yourself up, cover yourself up, don't wait for him, don't wait for him, he's doing beautiful. Here we see Cotto has Claudia cornered in the corner, and you know, dealing with these type situations, we have saw in the past that Cotto can, Cotto can deal with this. I don't know if Cloudy can still survive this next round fighting that same way. We know that Cotto can do it. Copy box numbers in six. Miguel Cotto, 95 punches thrown, 35 landed. Cloudy did reasonably well at 23 out of 59. But 30 of Cotto's landed punches were power shots. And he did as much damage as he could when he trapped Cloudy against the ropes for more than half of the round. Harold, how do you have it through six? Look at him. 58, 55, four rounds to two. Miguel Cotto. Jim, I tell you something. I maintain that they have to stop painting those canvases right before the fight. When you get a freshly painted canvas, it's like ice. It's like just, uh, you know, walking on ice. And that's what happened to Joshua Cloudy. It got wet on a Takani sign in Cotto's corner. His feet came out from under him, and he went down, and it just about cost him the fight. That right uppercut that Cloudy shot right between the gloves of Cotto was one of the most effective punches in the entire fight tonight. And you saw Miguel Cotto yeah. pawing at his eye with his left glove. Well, he saw how effective that uh, uh, Zab Judah was with punching up through the middle. I mean, the constant shifts in momentum here. What a seesaw fight. some foot movement back. Yeah, he's making Miguel back up, and Miguel is not the best fighter backing up all the time, especially with a guy like this. But, he's, but he needs to try to force physically and push Cloudy back to the rope. Uh, as I said this earlier, catch it when he's coming in, punching. Hard right hand by Cloudy. He's still got advantages in there, but he seems to have lost some of the confidence that he had in the first couple yeah, of rounds. But those, 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 those punches are hurting Miguel, and, his, and especially that right uppercut, which is a punch he's really got to watch out for. And, and here are the moments where we really see shades of Margarito, and we'll see what kind of a lasting psychological effect it's had on Cotto. Yeah, it's when 
It's when Miguel is the one with his back against yeah, the ropes and Claudia is stalking him that you have the mirror of what happened in the Margarito fight. What a seesaw uh, fight because the fourth round was all Cotto. The fifth round was Claudis. The sixth round was all Cotto. The seventh round belongs to Claudis so far. He's giving Cotto a beating in this round. Hard right hand against that cut eye. One sided round in favor of Clotty after he seemed in trouble in the last round. And that's what Miguel has got to do. He's just got to be playing an animal to stage up the fight. Cotto is holding his left glove against his eye as he goes back to the corner, trying to stop the bleeding himself. Here you see Claudia Lennon, a beautiful straight right hand, which just was typical of how he dominated the round with accurate pinpoint punches for the most part. And, and still, Cotto has not been able to get his rhythm again with any clean accurate punches for the most part. Cotto landed 30 power shots in the sixth round. He landed only eight in the seventh. Claudia landed 18, doubling him. Once again, Claudia closes in on the Letterman scorecard. Round eight of a scheduled 12. Last year in Cotto's life has been tumultuous. This fight has been tumultuous. Just like the Zab Judah fight was two years ago. Well, the one thing I can say about Cotto, he is one of the true, true warriors that I've ever saw in boxing. I mean, all the way until this fight ends, he's going to be in this fight. Good little shots on the inside from Claudi. Now Claudi against the ropes and Cotto in the attacking position again. But Clotty flurries off the ropes and goes back to the center of the ring. I don't know when I've seen a fighter as badly bothered by a cut in the ring as Cotto is tonight. Very similar, like you say, it reminds you a lot of the Margarito fight at this stage. Well, there aren't so many fighters who continue to fight with cuts like that. Well, and just as was the case against Judah two years ago here, Cotto is swallowing a lot of blood in addition to the blood that's blocking his vision. And you can still see that Claudia has had a problem with that right rear leg right there. That's why he doesn't do too much and, and, and loses his balance off. Oh, Miguel Cotto can't see any right hands coming. And they're really and, turning his head around. And, and the uppercut is going to do more damage than that if he shoots uppercut underneath. And I think doctors are going to have to seriously consider stopping the fight to preserve Cotto's left eye. I think you're right. Another right hand by Claudia, and again, Cotto puts his glove up to try to stanch the bleeding. Toto needs to land a couple of big shots and get the crowd back into the fight. That might raise his energy level again. This is looking hauntingly like the Margarito affair at this moment. Hard right hand by Clotty. Toto trying to find space in the ring to stay away from that right hand. Remember, that cut was caused by an accidental butt. This is what will bring the crowd back, whether he landed him or not. Set a pass to stop in this fight. It almost doesn't matter what Claudia does with his left hand. Ora, ora. At this moment, he appears to be in position to possibly win the fight on right hand punching. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. A little bit. 
Come on, Juni. Once you again, you can see what I've been saying earlier. Even though Miguel has been throwing a lot of punches, most of his punches are blocked for the most part by Claudio. And that's why you see Claudio comes back and shakes his head, goes, his defense has been extremely, extremely good, and he's relaxed when the photo is throwing those punches also. Combat box numbers in the last two rounds show Claudio with a 41 to 18 edge in power shots. Overwhelming majority of those 41 punches coming with the right hand. Again, just to belabor the point, Cotto can't see out of the left eye. Joe Santiago in Cotto's corner should be thinking about making the argument that the fight should be stopped on the cut. Because Cotto maybe has won enough rounds to escape without a loss at this point. Well, you, but it's going to get worse as the fight goes on. Exactly. Got to say, he can't afford Claudio, to lose so, any more yeah, rounds he, if that's going to be yeah, the, the gambit. He's, it, his, his best chance of winning the team at this stage would be to go to the scorecards. And the question is, without an experienced chief second in the corner, is this now becoming a disadvantage for Cotto in this fight? Emmanuel, many times in past fights, Miguel Cotto has switched southpaw and sometimes with startlingly positive effects. Yeah. If he were to switch to southpaw here, the bad eye would now be not the lead eye. Should well, he try it? He should try it. I mean, there's nothing working at this stage. He's got nothing to lose, as I'm concerned, because he's getting caught with those right hands. And, you know, it, it, it looked like he would try to take advantage of the leg problem that Cotto is supposed to have, but it doesn't seem like he's having that problem right now by boxing and making it move. But and I don't know if Cotto has that energy to do that himself and to just box and try to make Claudio use his legs. I have a hunch that at the end of this round, when we look at Harold Letterman's scorecard, we are going to see an even card with three rounds to go in the fight. I've been here, Claudio hit him. I'm All not, I, the I, momentum I, belongs I, to Claudio. I can't, I can't see how he might deny that uh, Miguel could be ahead on the scorecard. I know Harold may have it. I, to me, outside of that knockdown in the first round, I've said this has been for the most part of Josh and Claudio fight. Well, not rounds four and six, Emmanuel. They were very one-sided for Cotto. <laughs> and there's a knockdown in round one. And we're only in round nine. So it's still reasonably close, one way or the other. trying to rally down the stretch here in the night. Claudio goes after him again with the right hand. Big shot here for either guy. Could steal the yeah, round. Yeah, you know, this Cotto is still in this fight. I, I thought after the cut problem, he was having four, but he's still in this fight. All right, it's a good show, good show, man. You're, you're come back 100%. You're back 100%. Don't wait for him and let him hit him. Don't wait for him. I want you to, to move away from his body movements. Just, just slide away. When he starts moving, slide away. And keep, and keep the right hands up. Keep the right hands up. You're doing great. Keep it up. Don't wait for him. The left, the left up. Nice job. A little bit more. Junior, when you have him on the ropes, don't let him go. Come on, use that uppercut that we practice. What about that? Use that uppercut a little bit when he's up against the ropes. Second down. Three rounds to go. Copy box numbers in that round were fairly even. Claudia 18 out of 53, Cotto 14 out of 63. Harold, how do you have it through now? Look at him, just like you called it. I got it all even. 
185. In rounds five rounds to four, Joshua Cloudy, because he won three rounds in a row, seven, eight, and nine. But that knockdown, that extra point in round one is looming large in the scoring of this fight. So in the all-important points category, I've got an all-even 85-85. In rounds, we got a 5-4, Joshua Cloudy. If Miguel Cotto were able to legitimately win this fight, it would be the greatest victory of his career. I, I was just thinking the same thing, Max. I mean, it's, the courage that he's shown in this fight, the punishment he's taken, and hasn't went down, and, and, and still is looking to try to win this fight. He hasn't given up. And let me say that if the fight goes the distance, as most experts predicted from the beginning that it would, the panel of three judges which will score the fight is not exactly a who's who of judging in the sport, which is not to say they're not good. Not to say they don't know what they're doing, it's just that this is not exactly Jerry Ross and Dwayne Ford and Dave Moretti. It's guys whose names you may not know all that well. seems to have slowed a bit here in the 10th. No longer strafing Cotto with right hands, yeah. though the opportunity would still seem to be there. You're right. Cotto switches southpaw now here momentarily. But you gotta remember also, between the two of them, Cotto still is a bigger puncher between them. Cloud is, a, I think, a better technical fighter. And the fact that, you know, Cotto is still trying to win, and you never know what's gonna happen when he lands a punch, because he's a bigger puncher. And that's the one thing a puncher can always get himself back into a fight with just one single blow. Cotto is moving effectively to get away from Cloudy's punches. He blocked the left hook a moment ago. He's trying to hunt and peck his way through the 10th round. Now Cloudy comes alive. Courageous performance by both fighters. Cloudy appeared at one moment headed out of the fight with a left knee injury. He's recovered and is doing fine. Cotto still struggling to deal with that massive cut over the left eye caused by an accidental headbutt in round three. He needs to do that more often. That's what the lawyer did against changes. Cortez. Yeah, you've got to catch him in the changes. Interesting to see if up. the big left hook won the round for Cotto. Take his mouthpiece out. Hey. It'll dry out. I got it under control. Mira, let's get all of the Straighten up his legs. You gotta rid these rounds. You gotta rid these two rounds. Come on. Press him. Okay. Press him, press him. Deep breathing. Breathe deep breathing. Keep the left left hand go. Keep the hand was a slow round. The left should be going. Keep it going. Don't wait for him at all. Slow round for both fighters. Flotty throwing only 50 punches and Cotto throwing only 44. Flotty connected far more, but Cotto landed that big left hook in the closing seconds of the round, which may have enticed judges to give it to him. Now there's Vaseline hanging like a waterfall off of Miguel Cotto's left eyelid, and I'm amazed that Mercanti hasn't made him take it off, and now it falls off onto the canvas. Good left hook again by Cotto. He, he's got to get... Claudio when he's punching and make him exchange with him and try to catch him with his head over to the left hook. Claudio, not particularly a knockout puncher, has never had a knockout past the 10th round. Cotto has had 11th round knockouts. Stoppage against Octave or Paul a couple of years ago. What Claudie's doing is very smart by showing Cotto that Cotto's punches don't affect him. He reminds Cotto of Margarita. 
Over Margarita was a busier fighter. I wonder if given everything Cotto has been through tonight, the Margarito thing is now ancient history for him. Yeah, uh, to me, I would say so. I mean, he's fighting a great fight from sitting at that shop and active Claudio's and fighting with a handicap from such an early part of the fight. I mean, a severe cut that has never stopped bleeding. If Cotto finishes the fight on this on his feet, I think we can say he's put the ghost of Margarito to bed. If he does it, I think he's did it already for us. I'm concerned. I, Good yes, right yes, hands for both fighters in that exchange. There you go. He's got to keep like, catching him with a hook right there while he's exchanging. Being offensive, he's never going to hit Cloudy with punches. See that? Cloudy's preparing for those. He's got to pull him in, bend over, and try to catch him in with a hard left hook while he's throwing punches. Emmanuel, is he getting lucky or has he made the right tactical adjustment? Well, I think he has no choice really for the most part. Cloudy's putting a lot of pressure on him. But I think he should do everything he does should be a counter punch. He should not be trying to be aggressive in the thing. Tell you what, everything Miguel Cotto has learned since leaving the Sydney Olympics in 2000, in eight years as a professional fighter, he has brought to bear in this enterprise to get through 11 rounds with Joshua Clotty under these circumstances is extraordinary. And because Clotty manned up when he went down and could have quit with a leg injury, we have a great fight on our hands. Max Kellerman playing in vain with a voice that is threatening to go away, but hanging in. So Clotty hangs in with the bad knee. Cotto hangs in through the cut. Kellerman hangs in with laryngitis. What a night in the garden. Last round, last round. Last round, yes. last round. Oh, yes. you're following oh, the round. Oh, yes. You're following round, you're not oh, yes. throwing any punches. You're following. Cut it, cut the green off. You could cut the green off him. Just don't follow him around. This is the last round. This is the last round. Let's go. Let's go. We've got to win this round. We've got to win this round, Salian. We've got to win it. Get it with the round, Jonathan. Let's go. Let's go. We can do it, damn it. We can do it. We got to push him back. Come on. We got to push him back. Keep him on his back foot. Well, by CompuBox count, the 11th round was dead even. Cotto 19 out of 54. Clotty 19 out of 47. I sneaked to peak, and I can tell you that Harold Letterman scored it for Clotty which means high drama in the garden on Harold's scorecard because we're even going to the 12th. Fight on the table. Which man wants it more? And incidentally, at the beginning of the evening, I asked Emmanuel Stewart whether Joshua Clotty could win a decision against Miguel Cotto in Madison Square Garden. And now that question looms larger than ever. Yep. I wonder if Clotty is throwing enough punches to make it stick. There's tape hanging from Joshua's right glove. If Mercanti sees it, he has to wait for a lull in the action to try to fix it. Cotto's won the first minute of the round, guys. There are two minutes left. And here comes Mercanti with the scissors. Let's go. Blood streaming down Cotto's face as he tries to muster two more minutes of courage. Two little uppercuts inside for Cotto a moment ago. Clotty just not throwing. No, and, and this round could be won by Cotto because his body movement, his rhythm, his little combination, whether they land or not, is much more catching and flashier than Clotty just plodding forward. And whatever happens, there's going to be a beef from Clotty if he doesn't win because he looks like the winner. Miguel Cotto accidentally hit Joshua Clotty in the back of the head. It's the first time it's happened. You know, it seems like he's kind of a little, maybe I shouldn't say this, a little overreacting, especially when you consider all of the pain and misery that 
you know, Cotto has been going through the whole fight. Now. And maybe I shouldn't say that, but it seems like he's overreacting just to protect him in that situation. And Arthur McCanty Jr. is not he letting Claudia use it as an excuse. No, he, he, he turned his back. He, he oh, accidentally, which is nothing purposeful. Hey. Now he's warning Cotto to keep his punches up. But as Claudia showed you in the Duda fight two years ago, or excuse me, as Mercanti showed you in the Duda fight two years ago, he is not a referee who is quick to penalize. He gives the fighter the benefit of the doubt. Good left hook. Unquestionably, Cotto leads in the round because Claudia hasn't thrown enough. 30 seconds to go. Now Claudia begins to try to unload. Punches from Cotto, none from Claudia. Well, he's won this round. One more big left hand by Cotto. A right hand on the chin, but is it enough? Right. Right. Oh. Hey. Those sounds. And the two fighters momentarily embrace. Claudia wants to celebrate in the center of the ring. Claudia may have been the better fighter tonight. Cotto may be the better man. Great statement, Max. It was a wild fight. Let's take a look back at how eventful it was. Round number one, closing seconds. After Claudia seemed to have won the round, Cotto landed that jab, which knocked down the seemingly knocked down proof Ghanaian fighter. Third round, accidental headbutt, opening a huge cut over the left eye of Miguel Cotto, a cut which would affect his vision and his ability to stop Claudia's right hand for the rest of the fight. Round five, in a corner. Claudi finds himself up on Cotto's shoulder, and as Cotto shreds him, Claudi falls to the canvas in an awkward position and twists his left knee. For the next two rounds, there was a question as to whether Claudi could continue. But they made it to the 12th round, where Cotto turned to throw a left hook. Claudi was momentarily turned away from him, holding Cotto's right arm between his arm and his body, and Mercanti issued no penalty for the accidental foul. And now, three judges with a difficult decision, and let's show you who they are. John McHale from New York. Three title fights in his background. Had Cota ahead of Judah in the 11th round by six points. That was probably too wide a score. Tom Miller, 33 title fights out of Ohio. A one-point decision for Pacquiao in the second Marquez fight. And that was the margin of victory in the fight for Pacquiao. And Don Trell of Connecticut, seven title fights. Notable fight, Cotto over Malinaji, 115-112, which was pretty much the consensus score. Harold, your final score. You know, Chip, I thought Nico Cotto won it on that left jab to the jaw in the first round. Six rounds apiece, but in points, 114-113. Miguel Cotto, he gets the extra point for the knockdown in round one, and that's the difference in the fight. Three big rounds in a row for Clenny, make it real close, seven, eight, and nine, but Cotto's still on top by one single point in a very, very close fight. Joshua Clotty regards himself as Mr. Hard Luck in the welterweight division. Lost to Carlos Valdemir on a questionable late disqualification on a headbutt that may or may not have been intentional. Lost to Antonio Margarito in a fight in which he was leading early and then faded when he says both of his hands were hurt. Those were his only two losses. He's never been dominated. He wasn't dominate to dominated tonight, but he may conceivably wind up on the short end of another disappointing and, decision. And if he does, there'll be an outcry because from the point of view of someone watching the fight and not scoring it round by round, and maybe from the point of view of many who did score round by round, Claudia appeared the winner. And it seems to be taking an unusually long period of time.
for the scores to be tatted, tabulated. It's Cotto who's cut and bloodied. It's Cotto who was forced to retreat. It's Cotto who looked like the fight was slipping away from. But he came back to win the last round on all of those conditions, which is amazing. The first round and the last round. And now Michael Buffer is ready to end the suspense and tell us if there's a winner in the fight. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Madison Square Garden, we go to the scorecards. Don Trella scores the fight 116, 111 for Cotto. John McKay scores the bout. Pardon me, Tom Miller scores the bout 114, 113 for Clotty. John McKay has it 115 to 112 to the winner by split decision from Caguas, Puerto Rico. Still, WBO welterweight champion of the world, Miguel Angel Cotto. Cotto's promoter, Bob Arum, sat at ringside that night with his other superstar attraction, Filipino pound-for-pound -pound phenomenon Manny Pacquiao. Shortly after the stitches were embedded into Cotto's eyebrow, it became known that Cotto and Pacquiao were angling for each other. Now they will meet in Las Vegas on the night of November 14, and HBO Pay-Per-View will bring it to you live. We'll also build you up to that fight with another edition of our award-winning reality show, 24-7, which debuts October 24. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports. There you go. He's got to keep like, catching him with a hook right there while he's exchanging. Being offensive, he's never going to hit Cloudy with punches. See that? Cloudy's preparing for those. He's got to pull him in and bend over and try to catch him in with a hard left hook while he's throwing punches. Emmanuel, is he getting lucky or has he made the right tactical adjustment? Well, I think he has no choice, really, for the most part. Claudio's putting a lot of pressure on him. But I think he should do everything he does should be a counter punch. He should not be trying to be aggressive in his hand. Tell you what, everything Miguel Cotto has learned since leaving the Sydney Olympics in 2000, in eight years as a professional fighter, he has brought to bear in this enterprise to get through 11 rounds with Joshua Claudio under these circumstances is extraordinary. And because Claudie manned up when he went down and could have quit with a leg injury, we have a great fight on our hands. Max Kellerman playing in pain with a voice that is threatening to go away, but hanging in. So Claudie hangs in with the bad knee. Cotto hangs in through the cut. Kellerman hangs in with Lyron Zaito. What a night in the garden. Last round, last round. Last round, oh, yes, last oh, round. Yes, you're following the round. Oh, yes, you're following him, oh, yes, you're not oh, yes, throwing any punches. You're following. Cut it, cut the ring off. You can cut the ring off him. Just don't follow him around. This is the last round. This is the last round. Let's go. Let's go. We've got to win this round. We've got to win this round, Stalin. We've got to win it. Get it with the round, Jonathan. Let's go. Let's go. We can do it, damn it. We can do it. We gotta push him back. Come on. We gotta push him back. Keep him on his back foot. Oh, by CompuBox count, the 11th round was dead even. Cotto 19 out of 54. Claudio 19 out of 47. I sneaked to peek, and I can tell you that Harold Letterman scored it for Claudio, which means high drama in the garden on Harold's scorecard, because we're even going to the 12th. Fight on the table. Which man wants it more? And incidentally, at the beginning of the evening, I asked Emmanuel Stewart whether Joshua Clotty 
could win a decision against Miguel Cotto in Madison Square Garden. And now that question looms larger than ever. Yep. What Cotto has been through tonight, the Margarito thing is now ancient history for him. Yeah, to me, I would say so. I mean, he's fighting a great fight from seven at high, sharp and active Claudio's and fighting with a handicap from such an early part of the fight. I mean, a severe cut that has never stopped bleeding. If Cotto finishes the fight on this on his feet, I think we can say he's put the ghost of Margarito to bed. If he draws it, I think he's did it already for us, I'm concerned. I, Good yes, right yes, hands for both fighters in that exchange. There you go. He's got to keep like, catching him with a hook right there while he's exchanging. Being offensive, he's never going to hit Cloudy with punches. See that? Cloudy's preparing for those. He's got to pull him in, bend over, and try to catch him in with a hard left hook while he's throwing punches. Emmanuel, is he getting lucky or has he made the right tactical adjustment? Well, I think he has no choice with it for the most part. Claudio's putting a lot of pressure on him. But I think he should do everything he does should be a counter punch. He should not be trying to be aggressive in his hand. Tell you what, everything Miguel Cotto has learned since leaving the Sydney Olympics in 2000, in eight years as a professional fighter, he has brought to bear in this enterprise to get through 11 rounds with Joshua Claudio under these circumstances is extraordinary. And because Claudie manned up when he went down and could have quit with a leg injury, we have a great fight on our hands. Max Kellerman playing in pain with a voice that is threatening to go away, but hanging in. So Claudie hangs in with the bad knee. Cotto hangs in through the cut. Kellerman hangs in with Lyron Jada. What a night in the garden. Last round, last round. Last round, oh, yes. last oh, round. Yes. you're following oh, the round. Oh, yes. You're following him, you're not throwing any punches. You're following Cut it, cut the ring off. You could cut the ring off him. Just don't follow him around. This is the last round. This is the last round. Let's go. Let's go. We've got to win this round. We've got to win this round, Stalin. We've got to win it. Get it with the round, Jonathan. Let's go. Let's go. We can do it, damn it. We can do it. We gotta push him back. Come on. We gotta push him back. Keep him on his back foot. Well, by CompuBox count, the 11th round was dead even. Cotto 19 out of 54. Claudie 19 out of 47. I sneaked to peek, and I can tell you that Harold Letterman scored it for Claudie, which means high drama in the garden on Harold's scorecard, because we're even going to the 12th. Fight on the table. Here you see Claudia landing a beautiful straight right hand, which just was typical how he dominated the round with accurate pinpoint punches for the most part. And, and still, Cotto has not been able to get his rhythm again with any clean accurate punches for the most part. Cotto landed 30 power shots in the sixth round. He landed only eight in the seventh. Claudia landed 18, doubling him. Once again, Claudia closes in on the Letterman scorecard. Round eight of a scheduled 12. Last year in Cotto's life has been tumultuous. This fight has been tumultuous. Just like the Zab Judah fight was two years ago. Go there. Well, the one thing I can say about Cotto, he is one of the true, true warriors that I've ever saw in boxing. I mean, all the way until this fight ends, he's going to be in this fight. Oof, good little shots on the inside from Claudi. Now Claudi against the ropes and Cotto in the attacking position again. But Claudie flurries off the ropes and goes back to the center of the ring.
I don't know when I've seen a fighter as badly bothered by a cut in the ring as Cotto is tonight. Very similar, like I say, we manage a lot of the Margarita fight at this stage. Well, there aren't so many fighters who continue to fight with cuts like that. Well, and just as was the case against Judah two years ago here, Cotto is swallowing a lot of blood, in addition to the blood that's blocking his vision. And you can still see the cloud is having a problem with that right rear leg right there. That's why he doesn't do too much and, and he loses his balance off. Oh, Miguel Cotto can't see any right hands coming. And they're really and, turning his head around. And, and the uppercut is going to do more damage than that if he shoots uppercut under the knee. And I think doctors are going to have to seriously consider stopping the fight to preserve Cotto's left eye. I think you're right. Another right hand by Claudia, and again, Cotto puts his glove up to try to stanch the bleeding. Cotto needs to land a couple of big shots and get the crowd back into the fight. That might raise his energy level again. This is looking hauntingly like the Margarito affair at this moment. Hard right hand by Claudia. Cotto trying to find space in the ring to stay away from that right hand. Two little uppercuts inside for Cotto a moment ago. Claudia just not throwing. No, and, and this round could be won by Cotto because his body movement, his rhythm, his low combination, whether they land or not, is much more catching and flashier than Claudia just plodding forward. And whatever happens, there's going to be a beef from Claudia if he doesn't win because he looks like the winner. Miguel Cotto accidentally hit Joshua Clotty in the back of the head. It's the first time it's happened. You know, it seems like he's kind of a little, maybe I shouldn't say this, a little overreacting, especially when you can set all of the pain and misery that, you know, Cotto has been going through the whole fight. And maybe I shouldn't say that, but it seems like he's overreacting just to protect him in that situation. And Arthur McCanty Jr. is not he letting Claudia use it as an excuse. No, he, he turned his back. He did accidentally, which is nothing purpose. Now he's warning Cotto to keep his punches up. But as Claudia showed you in the Duda fight two years ago, or excuse me, as Mercanti showed you in the Duda fight two years ago, he is not a referee who is quick to penalize. He gives the fighter the benefit of the doubt. Good left hook. Unquestionably, Cotto leads in the round because Claudia hasn't thrown enough. 30 seconds to go. Now Claudia begins to try to unload. Punches from Cotto, none from Claudia. He's won this round. One more big left hand by Cotto. A right hand on the chin, but is it enough? Right. Right. Oh. Hey. Those sounds. And the two fighters momentarily embrace. Claudia wants to celebrate in the center of the ring. Claudia may have been the better fighter tonight. Cotto may be the better man. Great statement, Max. It was a wild fight. Let's take a look back at how eventful it was. Round number one, closing seconds. After Claudia seemed to have won the round, Cotto landed that jab, which knocked down the seemingly knocked down. Good evening, Josh. Miguel, you received the rules early in the night. Let's go toe to toe, touch gloves, and good luck to the both of you. Miguel Cotto is favored. Many in boxing like the upset. is Arthur Mercanti Jr. His legendary father, Arthur Sr., watching at home tonight. 
Arthur, we miss you, and we love you. First round gets underway. Both men set up to box for the moment. Claudi has been known to dispense with the jab early in some of his fights in favor of simply going to the body. Tonight, he begins to operate behind the jab conventionally here in round one. Cotto is extremely patient at the beginning of fights. Yeah, but I think that's just going to be for a very short period of time tonight. It's too much emotions and too much energy in this building for this fight to be patient. If you've followed Cotto over the years, you know that his two primary weapons are the brilliant left hook to the body and the straight right hand upstairs. But both guys are exhibiting beautiful jabs tonight, which is very, very unusual. I thought it, that it would be more of a tight hook type battle, but I'm seeing some wonderful jabs right between the gloves of the opponents. Well, from both of them. Claudio may be using the jab more than previously because he thinks he has a length and reach advantage against Cotto. Cotto's flashed the jab against Mosley. He used timing to offset Mosley's speed and also against Margarito, especially over the first half of the fight. Timing exactly, Max. I think that Cotto reminds me of Marco Antonio Barrera at his peak in the sense that the jab never seems to come at exactly the moment when you expect it. Plotty trying to penetrate Cotto's tight guard. Cotto has been very selective in his punching here in the first round. One thing to watch with Plotty, does his punch count drop off? So far, the only really clear decisive punch that I've saw has been Claudio's jab has been the most, to me, a significant, significant punch so far in this fight. Claudio blocking Cotto's body shots with his elbows. Great body punchers know how to block body punches. Cotto blocking Claudio's body shots with his arms. by Demarcus Corley back at 140 pounds. Cotto has indeed, or excuse me, Cotto has indeed stared down a fair amount of adversity. It's very important. Use it. All right, he's opening up for that. If you stir up, keep moving. Light side to side. Side to side, side to side. Come on, Jordan. We're doing it very well. A little bit of water now. Copy box numbers in round two, pretty close. Toto, nine out of 62, a low connect percentage of 15%. That has to do with what Emmanuel said to you about Flotty doing so well at blocking the body punches. Flotty was 13 out of 54. A connect percentage of 24%. Cotto still leading on Emmanuel's or on uh, Harold Letterman's scorecard, despite having lost the second round there because of the knockdown in round one. Cloudy gets to Cotto's ear with that left hook. But the left jab of Claudius has been very effective going between Cotto's glove. Cotto fights with that picket boot type style with his head moving forward, bent forward, and oftentimes Claudius going right through the center with his jab. And the body punch that Claudius shoots is more effective. He shoots the hook on top to make Cotto take his right hand up, and then he shoots the left hook to the body. And it's been working so far. He hasn't did it that often, but when he does do it, it's been effective. Biggest chance at catching Claudius when Claudius coming forward and punching. The same way that Oscar De La Hoya knocked down my quarter. Because, as I said, when he throws his punches, he pulls his head up. 
And that's when Cotto has got to try to catch him when he's coming forward and punching. Meanwhile, as Cotto's leaning forward, Claudia is yeah, starting to find the range of the left yeah, uppercut. Yeah, he's working that left hand beautifully, he's working outside and up through the middle of that hole that everybody in boxing knows that Cotto has. Cotto has. He's easy to hit him with punches up between the belt. Still, to me, he's a much more precision and accurate puncher well, in this fight. Claudia is certainly landing the, the more obvious, accurate punches, head snapping punches here early. See, that's his biggest danger right there. As he comes in off the time, he pulls his head up, and his body is up in the air where he can easily get knocked down. But as we've seen, Cotto is the heavy hand, heavier handed puncher. Definitely. There's no doubt about that. He's proven that. And he's also proven that he can come through adversity. And he has so many fights. He's been hurt, cut, knocked down, out on the street, and came back to win. Down against Ricardo Torres. Hurt and cut against Zab Judah. Wobbled by Demarcus Corley. Back at 140 pounds. Cotto has indeed, or excuse me, Cotto has indeed stared down a fair amount of adversity. It's very important. Use it. All right, he's opening up for that. If you stir up, keep moving. Light side to side. Side to side, side to side. Come on, Jordan. We're doing it very well. A little bit of water now. Copy box numbers in round two, pretty close. Toto, nine out of 62, a low connect percentage of 15%. That has to do with what Emmanuel said to you about Plotty doing so well at blocking the body punches. Plotty was 13 out of 54. A connect percentage of 24%. Cotto still leading on Emmanuel's or on uh, Harold Letterman's scorecard, despite having lost the second round there because of the knockdown in round one. Clotty gets to Cotto's ear with that left hook. But the left jab of Claudius has been very effective going between Cotto's glove. Cotto fights with that pick and boost type style with his head moving forward, bent forward, and oftentimes Claudius going right through the center with his jab. And the body punch that Claudius shoots is more effective. He shoots the hook on top to make Cotto take his right hand up, and then he shoots the left hook to the body. And it's been working. So kind of a short left hook type yep. jab. Upstairs left hook. And the only clean punch he landed in the round. I think it was a left jab. <laughs> I think it just caught him as though it was. He's a left handed oh, fighter, Cotto. Well, thank God for replays. You won the first round. You yeah, won the first round. Let's brush it off. Brush this off. You won, the, you won the round. You brush yourself, okay? Let your hands go. Let your hands go. Let your hands go. Let your hands go. That's what you got to go. Let your hands go. It's nothing. That was nothing. Forget about it. Forget about it. Here we see Cotto land, which was just a solid, powerful left jab, as I see it, but it just caught it at the right time when his body was in a bad position, and it forced a knockdown. Great call, Max. A knockdown on a jab. And again, the timing. It came at a moment when Claudi didn't expect it. Guys, it was a knockdown of a granite-chinned opponent Bingo. with a jab. I think the body position at the time, too, we have to cause the knockdown. But nevertheless, that was the only clean punch that I saw for the most part. In Claudia. his big fights, and Max makes the point, in his big fights, Claudi hasn't even been buzzed, much less knocked down. So that's a tremendously important fight or a point for Cotto on the scorecards. You heard Claudi's trainer, Kwame Asante, telling him he had won the round. Well, not exactly. 
when, when Claude punches, you'll notice he kind of jumps up as he, when he just said he punches very similar to the way that I Quarte used to punch. They, all those guys from Ghana, they keep their hands up high, but when they start punches, they kind of raise their bodies up often when they punch. Both fighters still operating behind very tight defenses. One minute into round two. Cotto stepping up the action just a little bit. Clotty reaching with the left hand to go to the body. Now, Clotty's going to dip that low to land his left hook to the body. There's going to be an opportunity for some right hand counter punches by Cotto. Well, I tell you what, at this point, you know, Clotty still seems to be the better fighter at this point, but I'm, as I'm watching, I mean, take that knockdown away for the most part. It's still that Clotty has a better defense for the body punches, too. But Emmanuel, one thing to watch. In his big fights, Clotty has dipped as low as averaging only 40 punches thrown per round. But he's landing clean, accurate punches when he does punch. I'm watching his punches are much more pinpoint. The biggest problem he has is when he punches, he off the ship, as I said earlier, pulls his head up. You see that better than most judges. Many judges respond more precision and accurate punch well, in this fight. Claudia is certainly landing the, the more obvious, accurate punches, head snapping punches here early. See, that's his biggest danger right there. As he comes in off the time, he pulls his head up, and his body is up in there where he can easily get knocked down. But as we've seen, Cotto is the heavy hand, heavier handed puncher. Definitely. There's no doubt about that. He's proven that. And he's also proven that he can come through adversity. And he has so many fights. He's been hurt, cut, knocked down, out on the street, and came back to win. Down against Ricardo Torres. Hurt and cut against Zab Judah. Wobbled by Demarcus Corley, back at 140 pounds. Cotty has indeed, or excuse me, Cotto has indeed stared down a fair amount of adversity. It's very important. Use it. All right, he's opening up for that. If you stir up, keep moving. Light side to side. Side to side, side to side. Come on, Jordan. We're doing it very well. A little bit of water now. Copy box numbers in round two, pretty close. Toto, nine out of 62, a low connect percentage of 15%. That has to do with what Emmanuel said to you about Flotty doing so well at blocking the body punches. Flotty was 13 out of 54. A connect percentage of 24%. Cotto still leading on Emmanuel's or on uh, Harold Letterman's scorecard, despite having lost the second round there because of the knockdown in round one. Clotty gets to Cotto's ear with that left hook. But the left jab of Claudius has been very effective going between Cotto's glove. Cotto fights with that picket boot type style with his head moving forward, bent forward, and oftentimes Claudius going right through the center with his jab. And the body punch that Claudius shoots is more effective. He shoots the hook on top to make Cotto take his right hand up, and then he shoots the left hook to the body. And it's been working so far. He hasn't did it that a pass that Cotto can, Cotto can deal with this. I don't know if Claudius can still survive this next round fighting that same way. We know that Cotto can do it. Copy box numbers in six. Miguel Cotto, 95 punches thrown, 35 landed. Claudi did reasonably well at 23 out of 59. But 30 of Cotto's landed punches were power shots. And he did as much damage as he could when he trapped Claudi against the ropes for more than half of the round. 
Harold, how do you have it through six? Look at him. 58, 55, four rounds to two. Miguel Cotto. Jim, I tell you something. I maintain that they have to stop painting those canvases right before the fight. When you get a freshly painted canvas, it's like ice. It's like just... Oh, you know, walking on ice. And that's what happened to Joshua Clotty. It got wet on a Takane sign in Cotto's corner. His feet came out from under him, and he went down, and it just about cost him the fight. That right uppercut that Clotty shot right between the gloves of Cotto was one of the most effective punches in the entire fight tonight. And you saw Miguel Cotto yeah. pawing at his eye with his left glove. Well, they saw how effective that uh, Glazab uh, Judah was with punching up through the middle. I mean, the constant shifts in momentum here. What a seesaw fight. Getting some foot movement back. Yeah. He's making Miguel back up. And Miguel is not the best fighter backing up all the time, especially with a guy like this. But, he's, but he needs to try to force physically and push Cloudy back to the rope. Uh, to, as I said this earlier, catch it when he's coming in, punching. Hard right hand by Cloudy. He's still got advantages in there, but he seems to have lost some of the confidence that he had in the first couple yeah, of rounds. But those, 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 those punches are hurting Miguel, and, his, and especially that right uppercut, which. Is a punch he's really got to watch out for. And, and here are the moments where we really see shades of Margarito, and we'll see what kind of a lasting psychological effect it's had on Cotto. Yeah, it's when it's when Miguel is the one with his back against yeah, the ropes, and Claudia is stalking him. That you have the mirror of what happened in the Margarito fight. What a seesaw uh, fight because the fourth round was all Cotto. The fifth round was Claudius. The sixth round was all Cotto. The seventh round belongs to Claudius so far. He's giving Cotto a beating in this round. Hard right hand against that cutter. Hard right hand by Claudius. And boy, are they fighting. But Claudius' legs are hurt. He has to go right back to the ropes again. What a chin Cotto has. He's going to get tired. He's going to get tired. He's going to, he's going to get tired. Be fast. Be fast. When you're when you're hard hitting, cover yourself up. Cover yourself up. Don't wait for him. Don't wait for him. He's doing beautiful. Here we see Cotto has Claudia cornered in the corner, and you know dealing with these type situations. We've saw in the past that Cotto can Cotto can deal with this. I don't know if Claudia can still survive this next round fighting that same way. We know that Cotto can do it. Copy box numbers in six. Miguel Cotto, 95 punches thrown, 35 landed. Claudia did reasonably well at 23 out of 59. But 30 of Cotto's landed punches were power shots. And he did as much damage as he could when he trapped Claudia against the ropes for more than half of the round. Harold, how do you have it through six? Look at him. 58, 55, four rounds to two. Miguel Cotto. Jim, I tell you I maintain that they have to stop painting those canvases right before the fight. When you get a freshly painted canvas, it's like ice. It's like just, you know, walking on ice. And that's what happened to Joshua Clotty. It got wet on a Takane sign in Cotto's corner. His feet came out from under him, and he went down, and it just about cost him the fight. That right uppercut that Clotty shot right between the gloves of Cotto was one of the most effective punches in the entire fight tonight. And you saw Miguel Cotto yeah. pawing at his eye with his left glove. Well, he saw how effective that uh, Glazab Judah was with punching up through the middle. I mean, the constant shifts in momentum here. What a seesaw fight.
In the gloves, and Cotto was one of the most effective punches in the entire fight tonight. And you saw Miguel Cotto yeah. pawing at his eye with his left glove. Well, they saw how effective that uh, Glazab Judah was with punching up through the middle. And then the constant shifts in momentum here. What a seesaw fight. Getting some foot movement back. Yeah. He's making Miguel back up. And Miguel is not the best fighter backing up all the time, especially with a guy like this. But, He's, but he needs to try to force physically and push Cloudy back to the rope. Uh, to, as I said this earlier, catch it when he's coming in, punching. All right, right hand by Cloudy. Still got advantages in there, but he seems to have lost some of the confidence that he had in the first couple yeah, of rounds. But those, 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 those punches are hurting Miguel, and, his, and especially that right uppercut, which. It's a punch he's really got to watch out for. And, and here are the moments where we really see shades of Margarito, and we'll see what kind of a lasting psychological effect it's had on Cotto. Yeah. It's when, it's when Miguel is the one with his back against yeah, the ropes, and him, Claudia is stalking him, that you have the mirror of what happened in the Margarito fight. What a seesaw uh, fight, because the fourth round was all Cotto. The fifth round was Claudia's. The sixth round was all Cotto. The seventh round belongs to Claudia so far. He's giving Cotto a beating in this round. Hard right hand against that cut eye. One sided round in favor of Claudia after he seemed in trouble in the last round. And that's what Miguel has got to do. He's just got to be playing an animal at this stage of the fight. Cotto is holding his left glove against his eye as he goes back to the corner, trying to stop the bleeding himself. Wait for him. I want you to, to move away from his body movement. Just just slide away when you start moving, slide away. And keep and keep the right hands up. Keep the right hands up. You're doing great. Keep it up. Don't wait for him. The left, the left up. Nice job. A little bit more. John, when you have him on the ropes, don't let him go. Come on, use that uppercut that we practice. What about that? Use that uppercut a little bit when he's up against the ropes. Second down. Three rounds to go. Copy box numbers in that round were fairly even. Claudia 18 out of 53, Cotto 14 out of 63. Harold, how do you have it through now? Look at him, just like you called it. I got it all even. 85-85 in rounds, five rounds to four. Joshua Claudi, because he won three rounds in a row, seven, eight, and nine. But that knockdown, that extra point in round one is looming large in the scoring of this fight. So in the all-important points category, I've got an all-even 85-85. In rounds, we got a 5-4, Joshua Clotty. If Miguel Cotto were able to legitimately win this fight, it would be the greatest victory of his career. I, I was just thinking the same thing, Max. I mean, it's, the courage that he's shown in this fight, the punishment he's taken, and hasn't went down, and, and, and still is looking to try to win this fight. He hasn't given up. And let me say that if the fight goes the distance, as most experts predicted from the beginning that it would, the panel of three judges which will score the fight is not exactly a who's who of judging in the sport, which is not to say they're not good, not to say they don't know what they're doing. It's just that this is not exactly Jerry Ross and Dwayne Ford and Dave Moretti. It's guys whose names you may not know all that well.
body seems to have slowed a bit here in the tent. No longer strafing Cotto with right hands, yeah. though the opportunity would still seem to be there. You're right. Cotto switches southpaw now here momentarily. But you gotta remember also between the two of them, Cotto still is a bigger puncher between them. Cloud is, a, I think, a better technical fighter. And the fact that, you know, Cotto is still trying to win and you never know what's gonna happen when he lands a punch because he's a bigger puncher. And that's the one thing a puncher can always get himself back into a fight with just one single blow. Cotto is moving effectively to get away from Cloudy's punches. He blocked the left hook a moment ago. He's trying to hunt and peck his way through the 10th round. Now, Cloudy.